It's impossible. I've had very heavy losses lately. I can't possibly pay you ten thousand pounds, nor even five. That's too bad. Seems a pity, Sir Edward, that such a great career as yours should be finished for such a comparatively small sum. Do you mean you're going through with it? I've no alternative. But I've offered you a thousand. That's better than nothing. What will you gain by exposing me? Oh, quite a lot. It will be a lesson to others that I'm not in the habit of bluffing. My terms, when stated, have got to be accepted. You've probably seen from the papers that I've had to make several examples already. It was unfortunate, but uh, necessary. People are so terribly obstinate. So incredulous, too. They never seem to think that what one threatens, one proposes to carry out. So you've been behind all those cases? Oh, yes. Yes, I've made no secret of it. The little nom de plume that I had adopted of the shadow has become quite a household word at Scotland Yard. <laughs> That's as far as it has got. Curious, but if they had got me, you might at this very moment be prosecuting me, Sir Edward. I'd give ten years of my life to be doing it. No doubt. Pay ten thousand and you'll have the chance of doing so. Now what's it going to be? You must give me time. Three months. Out of the question. I've already given you a week. Those letters were written ten years ago. Yes. So I observed from the date. I can't believe she ever gave them to you. My dear sir, I am very rarely given anything. What I get, I buy. What exactly do you propose to do? There again we come to the question of method. Undoubtedly going to be rather painful. Prison's rather an unpleasant place, Sir Edward. Yes. I've often wondered whether you lawyers who are instrumental in sending so many people there ever pause to consider what it's really like. Must you torture me as well as blackmail me? Not at all. I'm merely using all the means I have at my disposal to persuade you to see reason. Then again, the newspaper headline it would be quite a new kind of publicity for you, won't it, Sir Edward? Famous KC on criminal charge. Sir Edward Hume at the Old Bailey. Oh, stop, stop, yes. stop. The bigger they are, the harder they fall, don't they? Oh, stop. Listen, for the last time, give me one more chance to find this money. The time was up at midnight. It's now ten minutes past twelve. That is my answer. I will leave you, Sir Edward to your own reflection. Hello. Uh, Whitehall, one, two, one, two. Is that Scotland Yard? Yes. This is Sir Edward Hume speaking. Put me through to the Commissioner, will you? Sorry, sir, but the Commissioner left half an hour ago. 
Well, listen. Uh, yes. You're, uh, you're looking for the shadow, aren't you? Well, he's just left me. What? That's all I can tell you. We'll send the man rather fast. Let him have particulars, will you? I'm sorry. I shan't be in a position to make any further statement. <laughs> no. Casey, fine shot. Send Elliot to me. Yes. Now here's Markham's report. Not very helpful. He tells us what we know already and precious little else. However, for what it's worth, I'll read you his final conclusions. And then you can digest the rest at your leisure. There can be no doubt that these deaths are attributable to the person known as the Shadow. In each case, among the deceased's effects was found a letter signed with his signature demanding large sums as blackmail. As you say, sir, it doesn't take things much further. No, but we've got to. I had a communication from the Home Office this morning. Not very pleasant reading. They want results, and they want them quick. They're justified, of course. Four deaths in seven months. Bad, effort. Very bad. I know it's bad, sir, but I'm doing my best. I'm hoping to get him tonight. Is everything arranged? Yes, sir. On the lines you originally suggested? Yes, sir. I don't like it, Elliot. Anxious as I am to get him, I still don't like it. You're running a great risk going alone, you know that. It's a risk that's got to be taken, Sir Richard. I've thought it all out, and I'm certain it's the only way to land him. Well, take care of yourself, Elliot. I shouldn't like your name to be added to the Shadow's list. I've no intention of letting it, sir. The Shadow's had a good run for his money. I fancy it's my turn now. Well, good luck. Thank you, sir. Late, Markham. Well, this place ain't so easy to find. I lost my way to crossroads. I gave you explicit instructions. A child could have followed them. I ain't a child. What the hell you wanted to pick in a godforsaken place like this for beats me. Because it was, I suppose. This isn't the sort of job you can tackle at a street corner. Well, they've got the letters. What do you think it come all this way for? Not to ask riddles. Have you got them, yes or no? Yes. Took a bit of trouble to get him to. Yeah, not so fast. What about the doings? I'm paying nothing until I see what I'm getting. Trustful, ain't you?
Yes, these look pretty good. Pretty good? <laughs> I like that. They're knockouts. Every blooming one on them. Pretty she wrote them to the wrong bloke, eh? Yes, her husband would probably agree with you. How'd you get hold of them? That's neither here nor there. They're for sale. Take them or leave them. How much do you want for them? Well, I thought, uh... 500? Thinking doesn't seem to be your strong point. Try again. Yes, tell that it's a fair price, 500? Shillings? Pounds? Nothing doing, my friend. Well, how much will you give me? 200 cash. That ain't much. 200 or nothing. All right, Andy Devil. Here you are. Take them. Thanks. And now I'll trouble you to take a walk with me. What the devil do you mean? I'm Chief Inspector Elliot of Scotland Yard. If you try to resist, I'll shoot. Oh, so you're Chief Inspector Elliot of Scotland Yard, are you? Yes. And now let's have a look at you. You. You, the shadow. Well, gentlemen, you understand the situation. We are on trial, if not for our lives, for what is to some of us even more important, our reputation. The Shadow, in addition to his other victims, has claimed one of ourselves, and I may say one of the best of us, Elliot. Yes, it's a bad business. Bad for him and for us. From what he told me, I'm pretty sure he had his case complete. Elliot wasn't the sort of man to count his chickens before they were hatched. You can bet he was within an ace of catching his man. I formed the same conclusion myself. In fact, that was the reason I let him work on the lines he suggested. I tell you frankly, I didn't like the idea of his handling the case alone, but he was insistent, and I'm sorry to say I gave way. Now, Fleming, you've been handling the case since Elliot died. Have you anything to report? Yes, Sir Richard. Not so much as I'd hoped, it's true. There are still one or two links missing in the chain. But I've got a clue. A tangible clue, and I've made that my starting point. Yes? That charm, the charm that was found clutched in Elliot's hand. It was a most unusual design. Yes, I remember seeing so myself. I've taken it along to Hoffman, you know, the jeweler in German Street. He's supposed to be the biggest authority in England on that sort of thing. He thinks he can find out from whom it was purchased. Once I can establish that, I'll be within striking distance of the shadow. Oh, but there are hundreds of those sort of things bought in London every day. Not of that particular design. Hoffman tells me that kind of trinket is standardized, turned out by mass production, but not this one. It's of oriental workmanship, probably Arabic. Even so, in a jeweler's shop with the dozens of customers. That's just it. I don't suppose it was bought at a jeweler's. It's a hundred to one it was bought at a curio shop or an antique store. Now, Hoffman is in close touch with this type of place, always on the lookout for something unusual or unique. And that's where I hope he's going to be of some use. You think the dealer may have some recollection of the purchaser? I think it's highly probable. Seems a curious thing for a man to wear. Except for Masonic signs, you don't generally see that sort of thing on watch chains nowadays. Who said it was a man? And who said it was on a watch chain? What? You don't think... I mean, it's just as probable that the shadow's a woman as a man. But Elliot... Elliot was shot. And a woman can shoot as straight as a man. And don't mistake me. I've got a perfectly open mind on the matter. But I don't see the point in jumping to the conclusion that the shadow can only be a man, nor one person, for that matter. What are you driving at, Fleming? I think it's quite on the cards that the shadow's an organization, and a pretty big one. An organization formed to carry on blackmail on a large scale. Of course, there may be men in it, but the brains behind it might easily be a woman. I confess it's a theory I hadn't seriously considered. No, for the simple reason that for every female criminal, there are a hundred male ones. But blackmail as a crime is in a class by itself. It doesn't call for physical violence, nor does it call for physical strength. 
All it requires is cunning, and as far as cunning is concerned, women, in my opinion... Well, gentlemen, you're all married, I think. Well, we won't go into that. We've troubles enough ahead of us with the shadow. When do you expect to hear from Hoffman? Within a few hours, if we're lucky. Oh, very good. I'm going down now to my place in the country. I shall be there for the next 48 hours at least. The moment you get any news, phone through at once. If necessary, I'll come to town. Well, one thing more, sir. Are you alone there? I mean, except for Miss Bryant and the servants. No. I have one or two friends staying in the house. My sister-in-law, Mrs. Bascom, young Reginald Ogden, and, of course, my secretary, Beverly Kent. Why? Because I've more than a suspicion that the shadow, whoever he or she may be, is probably aware that you and I will be in close touch during the next day or two, and consequently might like to uh, tap the lines of communication, so to speak. I just wondered if you were entertaining any, well, comparative strangers. No, oh, good Lord, no. Not a house party, only intimate friends. Oh, thank you, Sir Richard. That's all I wanted to ask. Well then, gentlemen, I'll say au revoir. And remember, don't hesitate to get in touch with me at any hour of the day or night. Well, Carl, I think you and I better have a little talk, haven't we? Yes, well, we'd better do that at once. Right, let's get together. Hello, Sonny. I say it's most frightfully foggy. Mm. Can't you think of anything else? You've said that three times already today. Have I? Oh, I'm uh, most awfully sorry. You know, Reggie, you'll have to cultivate a little more imagination before you become a popular novelist. Yeah. Do you know this fog's given me a perfectly grand idea for a thriller? Yes. Most of your ideas come from fog, don't they? Yeah. No. No, it's a perfectly top hole idea, really. See, it's all about a man who gets lost in the fog and can't find his way. Well, of course he can't if he's lost, stupid. No, 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 you don't understand. He's, he's walking out in the country, miles away from anywhere, when suddenly, suddenly he, 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 he comes across a frightfully lonely cottage, all by itself. Well, by this time he's getting pretty tired, you know. Oh, so's the reader. Yeah, I say, I wish you wouldn't keep on batting in like that old thing. It, 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 it dries up the jolly old fount of inspiration. <laughs> no such luck. Oh, all right, if you don't want to hear the story about the man who got lost in the fog, don't. It's a jolly good story, full of bodies and whatnots. Oh, well, it must be good if there are whatnots in it. Ah, but that... Where are you going? Oh, ah, but that's where you're wrong, you see. <clears throat> it's the personality of the author that counts. Now, that's where I score. I, I simply ooze personality from every pore. Well, don't catch cold, dear. Oh, don't be serious, old thing. Well, what do you like me to do? Sing you a hymn? No. Listen, listen, Sonny, I, I, I've got something to tell you. It's been, it's been hovering on the tip of my tongue now for such a long time. Oh, don't, don't play just for the moment. And, and uh, it seems to me a perfectly good moment now for me to pour out my... Uh, I, uh, I, 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 now, don't stutter, Reggie. I, 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 I'm not stuttering. I'm merely trying to close the thought with, uh, uh, with uh, words suitable to the occasion. Don't you believe in the naked truth? Oh, no, 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 no don't joke about it. It's, it's terribly serious. Listen. Uh, couldn't you? I, I thought perhaps you'd like to consider a sort of uh, sort of collaboration, as it were. Oh, I see. You want me to help you with your stories? What? No, no, I don't want anything of the sort. I, I want... I, you see, I, I'm really terribly fond of you and all that sort of rot, and I thought perhaps that if, if you would like to, I mean, if, if, I, if I could, uh, perhaps we could sort of hitch up together. Reggie, are you trying to propose? Uh, uh, yes. It's awfully difficult. It's impossible. Oh, no, no. Oh, it's not impossible. These things only require a certain amount of willpower, you know. Reggie, you know, I'm awfully fond of you, but I can never marry you. Oh, I don't see why not. I'm sure you could if you tried hard. You know perfectly well I'm engaged to Beverly. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, I suppose that does make a bit of difference. Well, I'm so sorry, Reggie. Oh, that's all right. Don't apologize, old thing. It's only an idea of mine. I shall live it down, I suppose. Immerse myself in the old work and forget. Well, anyway, it's very nice to know that you're, you're, you're fond of me. Reggie T. Where's Father? Sir Richard is in the library, Miss. I have already told him tea's served. Is Mr. Kent with him? Uh, Mr. Kent hasn't come in yet, Miss. Not come in? No, Miss. I didn't know he was out. Oh, he went out quite early this afternoon. He took the small car. Oh. Uh, shall I tell Mrs. Bascom, please, sir? Yes. 
Ask and Beverly have gone in this fog. Haven't the foggiest. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Auntie. Been resting? Yes, darling. I simply had to lie down with an aspirin. <laughs> lie down with a what? An aspirin. Oh, well. I should have been a complete wreck tonight if I hadn't. I, uh, am I looking very, very haggard, Mr. Ogden? Well, you know, it's a funny thing, but you always look exactly the same to me. <laughs> How sweet of you to say so. I'm sure I look a perfect fright. Do give me some tea, darling. <laughs> Maybe be a dad. Tell Father's tea will get cold. Oh, certainly. Your father hasn't been looking at all well lately, dear. I'm quite worried about him. I suppose looking after all those dear policemen must be a terrible load on his mind. <laughs> There's something so fascinating about the uniform, though, isn't there? I always did like blue. So heavenly. I don't think there's anything heavenly about a policeman, aren't there? Perhaps not, darling. But then they're so brave, always watching to protect one from burglars and horrid persons of that kind. Are you afraid of burglars, darling? I am. I always search my room every night before I turn out the light. I've never found anyone yet. But you've never quite lost hope, eh? Oh, oh <laughs> how you frightened me, you naughty man. What do you mean? I'm sure if I ever saw a burglar, I should die. Hey, Daddy. Thanks, my dear. Hello, I've been looking everywhere for you. No, there are worse people in the world than burglars, my dear Elysium. What could be worse? Well, our friend the Shadow, for instance. The Shadow? How dreadfully thrilling that sounds. Who is the Shadow, Richard? Ah, Scotland Yard's been looking for an answer to that question for the last 12 months. All I can tell you is that he's a murderer and a blackmailer of the worst type. A murderer? And responsible for heaven knows how many suicides. Is it the Shadow who's been worrying you lately? Well, to tell you the truth, my dear, it is. There's been a good deal in the papers lately about Scotland Yard's inability to deal with this brute. The Home Office has been getting nasty. If something isn't done pretty soon, I shall have to resign. But haven't you any clue at all? One, very slight. I told you about poor Elliot, didn't I? Yes, well, horrible. Well, we found something in his hand. A little gold and platinum charm, a rather curious design, a clenched fist. <coughs> What's the matter, Johnny? Nothing, Daddy. The cup slip, that's all. Gone with what you were saying. Oh, what an extraordinary thing. Do you know, that reminds me of, of something that happened when I went to tea with my Auntie Fanny some weeks ago. Now, Auntie Fanny's got an enormous um, uh, cat, do you see? Oh, please be quiet. I want to hear some more about the shadow. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. Well, uh, Fleming, who took charge of the case after Elliot's murder, has been trying to trace the jeweller from whom the charm was bought. But so far, unfortunately, without any success. Oh, will it clear this away? Yes, miss. Do you know, Sir Richard, I believe I could help you over this, uh, the shadow, Chappie. You? My dear fellow, what do you know about the shadow? Oh, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing at all. But, um, uh, uh, I, I, I'm rather good at nosing out clues and things. Yes, Scotland Yard has several people who are rather good at nosing out clues and things, but it hasn't got them very far with a shadow. Ah, but you see, that's where I come in. You, uh, you have to have a peculiar sort of brain for uh, uh, getting on to these sort of criminal chaps, you know. Mm. You've certainly got that. You're wanted on the telephone, Sir Richard. Oh, very well, will it? If it's a shadow, shall I tell him that you're going to get him? <laughs> oh, certainly. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, joke. Hello? Sir Richard Bryant speaking. Who is it, you, Fleming? I'm coming along to see you at once, sir. As soon as this confounded fog will let me. I've got urgent news. One moment. There must be something wrong with the line. I can hardly hear you. Hello? Where are you speaking from? Well, station? What on earth are you doing there? I'm on the track of the shadow, sir. I know who he is. What, sir? You know who the shadow is? Hello? Hello? Are you there, sir? Hello? Hello, hello, hello? Last the exchange. It's all right. The house is about a hundred yards to the left, behind the trees. Jimmy, you're still going through with this. We haven't done so badly. Why not leave well alone? Not on your life. This bit of fog's the luckiest thing that ever happened. 
There's no better excuse for getting into a house than being a stranded motorist. Yes, I know in any other house, but the commissioner of police of all people. You know, that rather appeals to me. Hmm, I suppose it's because I've got a sense of humour. Are you sure there's no danger of your being recognised? Now look here, Maury, you're losing your nerve. <laughs> Who do you suppose is going to recognise me? Commissioner doesn't invite detectives to his country house. Has enough of them at the yard, I should imagine. No, no. Nobody's going to recognise me, and I'm not going to recognise him. What do you mean? I mean I'm going to be blandly ignorant of our host's identity. I mean I'm going to be a complete stranger in these parts. A poor, lost motorist seeking shelter with his charming uh, sister. By the way, don't forget, you're my sister. Hmm, I shan't forget that. All the same, I, I wish you'd give up the idea, Jim. I'm scared to death, and that's all there is to it. Listen, I've had my eye on this house for the last three months, and take it from me. There are very good reasons why I should be under that roof tonight. I oh. still don't like it. You'll like it well enough when I'm through. <laughs> He's got stuff there that'll put us on easy street for the next two years. Now listen, play up to me. Oh, it's going to be a cakewalk. Come on, Moya. Or shall I say, my dear sister? <laughs> Yes, and don't make a fool of yourself. I say, do you know that one about the poet's daughter? No. It's rather good. Uh, she, she was only a poet's daughter, but she wasn't an ode. <laughs> uh, uh, well, that's not right. She, she, she was not a... She was not a... That's funny, I had it at breakfast. The infernal phone's gone wrong. Gone wrong? It was all right a few minutes ago. Well, it's all wrong now. That was Chief Inspector Fleming speaking from the station, and the phone went dead while he was talking. Is he down here? It must be something urgent to have made him come down on a day like this. It is urgent. From what I could gather, he's on the track of the shadow. Do you mean to say he knows who the blighter really is? That's what he said. Confound the thing. Not that it matters as it happens, because he's coming straight here. He'll never find his way here in this fog. Fleming? He'll find his way to a snowstorm. Where's Beverly? I haven't seen him all the afternoon. Well, it said he went out after lunch. Went out? What on earth did he go out for? He knows perfectly well I want him. Ah! No. There's someone at the window. Someone looking in. There's no one there, Auntie. You must be dreaming. I'm not. It was a face. A horrible face. I'll go and have a look. <laughs> Might be the jolly old shadow itself. <laughs> not a sign of anybody. But even if there were a shadow, you couldn't see it because you can't see shadows in fog, can you? <laughs> There's nothing to worry about, my dear Alicia. It was probably only your imagination. No, it wasn't. Really, it wasn't. It was an awful face. Of course, I know what happened. You must have seen your own face. Mr. Ogden! Oh, no, no, I'm, I, I, I'm so sorry. I, I, I didn't mean that. I mean, you, you, you must have seen your own reflection in the glass. Oh, that's nearly as bad. Oh, I, I'm not going to stay here to be insulted. I wish I'd never seen the wretched face. But when we're all murdered in our beds, then you'll thank me. <laughs> Would you believe that a woman of her age could be so foolish? I believe anything of that old girl, except her age. Do you think she really did see something? Well, if she did, I must have missed it in the mist. <laughs> oh, stop joking, Reggie. You're trembling, Sonny. What's the matter? I don't know. I... I can't explain it. Just a feeling, that's all. Do you remember when I was quite small and Tatters was run over and killed? Tatters? Who's Tatters? My little dog. I knew he was going to be killed long before it happened. I've got the same feeling now. Somewhere round the house is something evil. I, I, I see. You're giving me the creeps. No, Sonny, that's all. That confounded woman's upset you. No, no, it isn't her. I've felt like it all day. Just the same as I did when my little dog was killed. There's a lady and gentleman in the hall, sir. A lady and gentleman? Who are they? I don't know, sir. The gentleman says his name is Silverton and that his car has broken down. He wants to know if you'd be so good as to allow to use the telephone. Oh, I'm afraid that's impossible, will it? The telephone's gone wrong. What sort of people are they? He seems almost a gentleman, sir. 
I expect it's Billy Bennett. What do you mean by that? Well, sir, he's quite nicely dressed. Hmm? And the lady? She is uh, what you might call a very modern miss. <laughs> Well, I suppose we'd better ask these people in. We can't very well let them wander about in this weather. All right, will you show them in? Yes. Mm, nice place. Will you come this way, please? I'm so sorry to trouble you, but I expect your butler's explained. Uh, yes, I only wish I could help you, Mr. Silverton, but unfortunately something's gone wrong with my telephone. I say, that is hard luck. Uh, perhaps you wouldn't mind my, my sister stopping here while I go and find a garage. I'm afraid the nearest garage is three miles away. You'd never get there in this fog. But if you care to stay here until the fog lifts, I should be very pleased to send my chauffeur for you. Oh, that's really awfully kind of you. I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid I haven't the pleasure of knowing whom I'm addressing. Oh, my name is Bryant. Richard Bryant. Oh, my dear, you're frozen. Do go upstairs and take your things off. I'll look after your sister, Mr. Silverton. Thank you so much. Oh, can I have my suitcase? It's in the car. Of course, I'll have it sent up to you. Thank you. Well, I expect you'd like something to get the taste of the fog out of your mouth, wouldn't you, Mr. Silverton? Thanks, I should. Come along to the library, then. Well, may I introduce you, Mr. Ogden, Mr. Silverton? How do you do? How do you do? By the way, are you in a relation to Sir Richard Brown? You're very like his picture in the newspapers, you know. No. Oh. <laughs> I should never have expected anyone to recognize me from one of those. Will it uh, take Mr. Silverton's coat? And uh, will it, when Chief Inspector Fleming arrives, show him into the library? Yes, sir. Fleming? Yes. Do you know Fleming? Oh, no, no. Just a coincidence, that's all. Rather startled me for the moment. My, uh, my sister's engaged to a man called Fleming. Oh? Well, it certainly can't be the same Fleming, unless the chief inspector's contemplating bigger men. <laughs> Follow me. I'll show you where to hide. I wonder if you'd excuse me for a moment, Mr. Silton. I've rather an important letter to write. Certainly. I'll go and see how my sister's getting along. You, is it? Yes, I was hoping I'd catch you alone. I saw you come down the stairs through the library door. Now listen, the position's serious. You think the old man suspects anything? No, why should I? I'm not frightened of him. Do you know who's expected here tonight? No, who? Chief Inspector Fleming. Fleming? Coming here? Yes, I thought that would startle you. Jim, we must get away at once. We can't. It's like pea soup outside, and it's three miles to the nearest station. Oh, isn't an hotel or something we can go to? No, no, the old man says there isn't a house for miles. What can we do? Nothing except stay here. It'll look suspicious if we try and leave now. What about Fleming? If he sees you? You leave Fleming to me. I'll deal with him. Yes, and if this darn fog lifts, we can get away in the morning before the others are up. We might take one of the old man's cars. Yes, it'd be rather funny to steal a car from the Chief Commissioner of Scotland Yard. Oh, I'm laughing so much, I can't see the joke. Jim, why do you think Fleming's coming here? Do you think he knows? No, I've covered my tracks too carefully. Just a coincidence. Suppose it isn't. 
Suppose it's you he's after. Then it's going to be very unpleasant for Fleming. Jim, you wouldn't. Wouldn't I? It means the eight o'clock walk for me if I'm caught. But surely there's some other way out. Oh, but I shall only... What's that? Oh, it's you, is it? Oh, thanks awfully for letting me in, old son. I, I, I've just been admiring the view. In the fog? Uh, yes, yes, it looks better in the fog. You know, like one of those modern pictures. Leaves everything to the imagination. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, well, I, th I think I'll toddle off and have a bath now. I often do that, you know. I say, um, uh, won't, won't you join me? No? Oh, well, perhaps you're right. You think he heard anything? No, and if he did, he'd be too much of a fool to understand. What was he doing at that window? Maury, you're getting nervy. I'm sure... Down to the library, Inspector. I don't know how you feel, but I'm nearly frozen. So am I. Beastly cold, isn't it? Well, come along. Fleming. Hello, Beverly. So you brought the Inspector with you? Oh, yes, sir. It's lucky I met your secretary, sir. I'd never have found my way in this fog otherwise. <laughs> By the way, sir, is Sonia about? Sonia? Oh, well, yes, I did a little shopping for her this afternoon. Oh? Yes, I expect you'll find her somewhere about. All right, I'll go and look for her, sir. Well, Fleming. I brought Detective Inspector Kahn, two plainclothes men with me, sir. They're outside now watching all the exits to this house. They have orders that no one is to leave. Why, Fleming? Sir Richard, when poor Elliot was killed and I took charge of the case, I told you I'd get the shadow, and I've got him. First of all, here's the charm that was found in poor Elliot's hand. Good. I'll put this under lock and key. And what's more, I found the jeweler who sold that charm, and also the man who bought it. He's here. Here? Yes, in this house, now. Nonsense, Fleming, you must be mistaken. I've made no mistake, sir. I tell you, the shadow is here. Who is he? The shadow is... Fleming, what's happened? Are you hurt? Fleming, why don't you answer? Why, what's the matter, Sir Richard? What's happened? Turn the lights on, man, turn the lights on. Why is he? What was that noise? Is anything wrong? No, don't come in here, darling. There's been an accident. How did it happen? I don't know. Yet. What's all the bother about? There's the most frightful shindy going on. Jove, what happened? Fleming's been shot. Who did it? The shadow. The shadow? Yes, he's somewhere in the house. Uh, is he? Who is he? Only Fleming knew.
What are you doing? Oh, hello, old chappy. No, don't call me old chappy. No, old son. No, no, old son either. My name's Carr, Inspector Carr. Well, how to do, old thing? What are you doing here? Oh, just trying to be helpful, old bean. Carr! Carr, what make? What, big pardon? I'm so sorry. Oh, uh, tons of apologies and all that, old uh, uh, inspector. <laughs> Got it that time. What are you doing crawling about on your hands and knees? Oh, just looking for clues and things. You know, this place must be simply bristling with uh, Well, if it is, I ought to see an oculist. Oh, I expect you've overlooked them. What? Oh, uh, quite by accident, of course. Uh, uh, I thought perhaps I might bump into something. Yeah, well, you will if you're not very careful. Uh, hold that, will you? Thank you. You know, I rather fancy myself as a detective. Uh, sort of got the instinct, you know. Oh, uh, you, you've got it too. I've written no end of ripping mystery stories all about murders and clues and that sort of thing. And there's always something on the scene of the crime that the jolly old detective chappy doesn't notice. Uh, a little bit of dust or a, a cigarette end or a speck of, of nothing. And it, it gives a criminal chappy a weird one, you know. I see. Now, you bet your life this shadow Johnny's done something of the sort. You can't go around bumping people off all over the place without leaving clues. It simply isn't done. Now, see here, mister. Uh, my name's Ogden, old boy. Now, talking about clues... Yeah, well, we're not talking about clues. Oh, but you must. You've jolly well got to. If we're going to work together... Yeah, we're not going to work together. I don't want any amateurs messing around, get that? Amateurs? <laughs> but I'm afraid you don't understand. Now, I don't want to spoil anyone's enjoyment. If it amuses you to go around measuring things, do it. But not in this room. Go and measure the bathroom. The bathroom? Yes, or anywhere else, so long as it's far enough away from this room. You know, something seems to tell me that you don't want my help. Oh, you have the makings of a detective in you after all. All right. If you don't want my help, you jolly well needn't have it. But you'll be frightfully sorry for it, you will really. However, it's your loss. I don't mind. I'll take the high road and you take the low. It's all very well for you to sneer just because you think I'm a blinking amateur. But you wait till I've caught the jolly old shadow single-handed. That'll make you laugh on the wrong side of your face. <laughs> well? We've searched the grounds as well as we could in the fog, sir. Did you find anything? Uh, no, sir. No, I didn't suppose you would. Where's Davis? Outside the front. Larches round the back. All right. Tell him to stop there. Yes, sir. One minute. Find out where everyone was when that shot was fired. Yes, sir. Well, Carl, anything fresh? No, sir. Didn't Fleming give you any hint as to who the shadow was? He never had time. He was just going to tell me the name when he was killed. He was first as an oyster with us. Mm. Just said he was going to get the shadow. And the shadow got him first. Do you know where everyone else is at the moment, sir? I don't. I've just come from my room. You'll have to hide it somewhere. If they find it on you... They won't. Leave it to me. lights out. I don't know. They went out just as I was coming down. I'd better find Wallace and search the house. Wallace! Let's have some light. Are you sure it was a man, dear? Yes, certain. Willet, did you put the hall lights out? I, sir. No, sir. Most extraordinary. We heard a scream. Yes, it was me. The lights were put out by someone who didn't want to be seen going upstairs. Have you seen Beverly or Ogden? Here I am, old fella. Where have you been? Uh, in the bathroom. What are you doing here? I give you two guesses. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I've been looking for clues. I say you all look frightfully serious. What's the trouble? Sonia thought there was a stranger on the stairs. Can I help you in any way? I don't think so, thank you. 
if you make yourselves as comfortable as you can. And I think it's for a brandy for you, my dear. What about that window? Well, we may as well go down again. Did poor Mr. Fleming bring that charm with him? Yes, I got it in the safe. Could I see it? Whatever for, child. I'd rather not explain, but I should like to see it. But it's... Uh... Oh, please, Father. Very well, child, if you really want to. I found it I must have left that key upstairs when I was dressing. Careless of me. I won't be a minute. Nobody here who can't be accounted for. We've searched everywhere now except downstairs. I can see him, Wallace. Come on, man. You're hurt. No, no, it's only a scratch. I'll be all right in a minute. The devil. He nearly got me. Who was it? I don't know. I only saw a hand. Oh, steady him. Yes, this is the sort of thing takes the start out of you for a moment, doesn't it? You'd better come into the library and sit down. What were those shots? Oh. No, it's nothing. Somebody fired at me from the landing. Sonny, darling, get Mr. Carl whiskey and soda, will you? I was in my room when I heard the shots and on the landing a moment later, but I saw nobody. I say the jolly old shooting season started early this year. Where have you been? For me? Oh, all over the place, old boy. Upstairs, downstairs, but not, not in my lady's chamber. Women get annoyed if you do that sort of thing, you know. Uh, were you upstairs just now? What, during the old shooting? <laughs> no fear, I was in the dining room. Doing what? Having a drink. Anybody with you? Not a soul. But, but, but don't you get into your head that I'm a secret drinker or anything like that. Well, if only your word that you were there at all. Not at all, I can prove it. <sighs> there you are, Johnny Walker. You can't get away from that. <laughs> Personally, I don't want to. <laughs> you saw nobody, sir? No, I was in my room looking for the key of the safe. But it's gone. Gone? Yes, I can't find it anywhere. Then you, you can't open the safe. Not without the key, dear. It's impossible. You think the key's been stolen? It must have been. I've just found Mr. Cancer, unconscious in his room. Is it serious? No, miss. He's had a nasty crack on the head, but he was recovering when I found him. I must go to him. Uh, one moment, Yes, dear. please don't go. Sudden death's at large in this house, and we don't want any more victims. This man Silverton, Sir Richard. Yes? I think I'd like a few words with him. Where is he? With his sister in the drawing room. You bring them both in here, will you? Yes, sir. I wonder if your telephone's been reconnected. Isn't anyone going to take care of me? I've been sitting here alone, too terrified to move. I could have been murdered six times over. Don't worry. You're quite safe. 
I should feel much safer in bed with a policeman outside my door. Lady was alone, sir. Where's your brother? I... Well? I don't know. You don't know? No, he left me in the drawing room. He told me he wouldn't be long. He told me to wait there until he came back for me. I expect he's been hit over the jolly old loaf of bread. Loaf of bread? Head, dear, head. <sighs> Mr. Ogden, how can you talk so flippantly? We may all be killed before morning. Oh, well, perhaps he's gone off to bed. Why should he go to bed? Well, why should anybody go to bed? Go to Bo Peep, of course. Bo Peep? You know, your education's been sadly neglected. Sleep, dear, sleep. Well, we should follow his example. All right, I will. Well, I'll toddle off and find some cigarettes. Nothing like tobacco for giving you inspiration, you know. All you want is an ounce of shag, a violin and an old dressing gown, and you'll get the shadow every time. All the best detectives do it. I do it. Why don't you try it, old son? Oh, and, uh, and always remember that a, a bird in the hand is worth two in the taxi. Well, of all the senseless idiots. Yes, but he's a good fellow all the same. His father was a very old friend of mine. Excuse me, sir. The window. It's open. What's that? Which window? Uh, downstairs, sir. By the kitchen door. It was shut and fastened when I passed. Show me. Come on, Wallace, sir. It's just the window, sir. Someone in a hurry by the look of things. Mm, obviously. Shut the window. There's no need for you to wait. Very good, sir. I wish I knew what had happened to your brother, Miss Silverton. He must be somewhere about the house. Unless... Unless he went through that window. He's gone and left me to... I wish I'd never come here. No, no, forgive me, Miss Silverton. I shouldn't have put it like that. No doubt there's some perfectly natural explanation. Hello, everybody. I told you the jolly old tobacco would yield something. I found a clue. What? Well, as I was going up to my room to get a cigarette, I found this on the landing. Look, it's been used for wiping a pistol. You can see the powder marks on it. Whose is it? Haven't the foggiest idea. Didn't have time to look. Oh, wait a minute. Here's some initials on the corner. R B. It must be one of yours, Father. Mine? Let me have a look. We ought to have a guard. Yes, sir. Sir, someone outside the window. Been, Mr. Silverton. I went out to get some air. I had a headache. I never knew that mud was a good cure. I fell down. What about the truth? I told you. A lot of lies. I want the truth. Look here, you've no right to treat me as if I were a criminal. We'll see about that. Take him upstairs to his room. I must request you to remain there, sir, until further orders. Does that mean that I'm under arrest? Not yet, officially. Take him upstairs, Wallace. Oh, you'll be sorry for this. Well, if I am, I'll send you a wire. Car. Yes, Miss Brown? Can I speak to you? Certainly. Take him upstairs. Right. Come on. Well, Miss Brown? Mr. Carr, I want to speak to you alone. I must tell someone. I'm very glad you told me. Are you sure about the charm? No, not quite sure. I must see it first. I'll get a man to open the safe in the morning. So that's why the key disappeared. Hmm. Clever. It seems horrible to suspect. Shh. Who's 
So there you are, Sonny. Don't you think it's time you went to bed? It's very late. I think it's time everyone went to bed. Can I see Beverly first? Yes, dear. I'll go as far as his room with you. You needn't bother. I'll go with him. Very well, sir. We'll go one on each side. The corridor's dark, and shadows are dangerous. Janet, put out the old Anil satin pyjamas in case anything should happen during the night. Yes, madam. I won't be a minute. How are you feeling, darling? I still got a bit of a headache. What is a nasty crack? I know. I wanted to come and see you before, but they wouldn't let me. I'm glad you've come now. I've got something for you. Beverly, you darling. How do you like it? Oh, it's perfect. And please. Well, that's why I was out so long this afternoon. Darling, do you feel well enough to see Carl now? Oh, yes, I suppose so. All right. I'll tell him to come in. Good night. Good night, darling. Who, 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 who's that? It's me, Mr. It's me, Mr. Ogden. Will it? Oh. Oh, oh yes, of course. <laughs> of course, Will it? It, uh, it would be you, wouldn't it? Uh, w w w what are you doing here? I came to put out the lights, sir. Uh, put out the... Oh, oh yes, yes. I'm I sorry see. I frightened you, sir. Frightened me? <laughs> you didn't frighten me. <laughs> Why, in another minute, I should have tackled you. Indeed, sir. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Why, I, I, I was only staying up to sort of uh, mount guard, as it were. Good night, sir. Uh, yes, well, I've, um, I've changed my mind. I, uh, I think I'll go to bed. Then I'll wish you good night, sir. Oh, good night. Well, let's see you in the morning. I hope so, sir. Hope so? What do you mean, hope so? You don't seem very certain. It's impossible to be certain, sir. Anything might happen. Anything? Well, well, well you, 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 you don't think anything's going to happen to me, do you? It wouldn't surprise me in the least, sir. Oh, well, well, wouldn't it? Oh, you are a priceless old optimist, aren't you? Anyway, I'm going to bed. And what is more, I'm going to lock myself in. You better get away while you've got the chance. I thought it was all up and that gal touched me on the stairs. A bit of luck I put out the lights. I had to get you upstairs somehow. I knew Inspector Carr would want to examine the linen cupboard. Blast him, it was him what got me my stretch. Shh, don't talk so loud. Come in the library. Uh, 
Uh, you better be going now. It isn't safe to be hanging about. Have you got enough money to go on with? Yes, but it won't last very long. Is it all you've got? I'll send you some more. Hurry now, for God's sake. What's that? Quick, hide behind the bookcase. It may be one of the detectives. Will it? What's happened? Who's that? It's Hammer Stevens, the man who escaped from Dartmoor three weeks ago. How the devil did he get here? He came to me for help, sir. You? Why you? It was only natural, sir. He's... he's my son. Fox clearing. Now's our chance. What do you mean? To get away, of course. We daren't wait. They might find it. Yes, but how? That way. Door. Where will it? Get that inside you. All right. Thank you, Sir Richard. I always thought your son died in France during the war, would it? I let everyone think so, sir. I hope you'll forgive me, Sir Richard, for what I did. I think it probable that in the circumstances I should have done the same thing myself. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I wonder what the shadow expected to find in the safe. It contains the only piece of evidence likely to lead to his identity. The charm. Of course. I'd forgotten that. He hadn't. Neither had I. That's why he stole the keys. I'll go first and steal you the rope for you. <laughs> yes. I prefer this sort of rope to the other. Come on, get your Macintosh on and hurry up. We can't do anything with the safe tonight, sir. We must wait till daylight and then we can get somebody to open it. They've gone. Gone? Who? The Silvertons. There's a rope of sheets out of the window. Come on, Wallace. We may be in time to catch them. Our man. Oh, well, if they want it, they can have it. No! Get behind those bushes. Let me draw their Pfizer. You work around behind them. Hello, they lost all the racket. A visitor, Silverton, made a bolt for it. And cars got him by the heels. What? 
Father, what were those shots in the garden? Well, as far as I can gather, somebody's got hold of somebody else's heels and Mr. Carr's uh, lost his belt. It's, uh, 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 it's all very complicated. I, I, I don't understand it, really. You better give enemy, don't want to get hurt. Come on, drop that. Drop it. I say, things are beginning to move, aren't they? Fancy dear old Silverton being the shadow, after all. You can't be sure. Come on now. Let's see what you got from those bushes. Well, the game's up, I suppose. There you are. Where'd you get this? Find out. Good heavens, that's Lady Bland's. You recognize it, sir? Yes, I've often seen it. She only lives a few miles away. I dine there regularly. So that's it. Come on, Wallace, search him. Well, that's conclusive. Who are you? Find out. Don't expect me to do your job for you. I expect we've got an account of you at records. What's that? By Jove. I know you now. You're Jimmy Weldon. We've been looking for you for a long time. And your wife? Well, now you've got it, you might be satisfied. If that car hadn't broken down, you'd have still been looking for us. Do you know, you're, you're the first real burglar I've ever seen. Weldon's more than a burglar. He's the cleverest safe breaker in England. By Jupiter, now you're here, I'd like you to have a look at Sir Richard's safe. Come along. Well, what about it? You think you could open that? In my sleep. All right, carry on. There's something in there that I want. Look here, is this going to count in my favor? Yes. All right, give me those tools. I say, well, what's the big idea? You'll see in a minute. Wallace, tell Davison Larch to come here and fetch Mr. Kent and Mrs. Vasquez. Yes. Lock that door, Wallace. No. Davis, go and guard that window. Who, me? Oh, I beg your Large, stay where you are till I want you. What is happening? The shadow's in this room. In a few moments, we shall know who he is. I say, how fearfully thrilling. Got it! May I ask, Richard? You sure this is the box the Fleming gave you? Thank you, sir. Miss Bryant, you ever seen this before? Yes. Quite sure it's the same one? Yes. I remember that mark on it. This belongs to the shadow. When did you see it? Oh, Can I get out? Impossible. It's not impossible. Here's the shadow. Miss Bryant suspected it directly she heard a description of the child. She saw one like it on his dressing table some weeks ago. Why didn't you tell me? Because I wasn't certain till I'd seen it. I wish I'd got you this evening from the staircase car. You did your best. You were scared when I told you to go and measure the bathroom, weren't you? Because you'd never had a bath at all. You just wet your face and hair after killing Fleming and pretended you'd been in the bath. Your biggest mistake was in trying to throw suspicion on Sir Richard with a handkerchief. I knew you were lying then because I'd searched the landing and I knew there was nothing there. Hmm. Yes, your clever car. Far cleverer than those fools at the yard. <laughs> they ought to make a chief commissioner for this. But you'd never have got me in spite of all your cleverness if it hadn't been for Sonia. <laughs> brains. Why, I've got more brains in my little finger than the whole of Scotland Yard put together. That's enough, Ogden. Save your speeches for your trial. Well, I suppose I'd better toddle along. Cheerio, everybody. I hope it's a case of gone but not forgotten. You know, old boy, I told you you'd never catch the shadow without me. Hey!